Hello, and welcome back to Suzerain. That's what the game's called. <laughs> With the Republic of Sordland. And today's episode, the Assembly Vote on the Constitutional Changes. Here we go. Here we go. Serge was driving me towards the Grand National Assembly for today's historic vote. It was a big day. I wondered whether my attempt at changing the Constitution would end any different than Alfonso's. I looked out the window as the noise of the city diminished and saw that we were already inside the palace complex. The complex housed the buildings of all government branches in the center of Whole Sword. It was one of the biggest developments in Swordland. The Maroon Palace stood on a small hilltop surrounded by trees. We passed by the palace and entered the forest that separated it from the Grand National Sibley. We drove on the small road that wound through the forest. It was a warm day, so I rolled down the window. I could hear birds singing from the trees. Are you okay there, back there, sir? Hey, Serge, I'm okay. How are you doing? I'm as good as I can be, sir. Serge made a left turn out the forest and entered the vast garden area of the assembly. Did you know that Mr. Charkun's soul came to Whole Sword this morning? I heard some politicians talking about it today. Apparently, this is the first time he's come to the city in the last five years. I thought he left the mainland and lived on Duru Island, never to return to politics. But they were saying he might be here to exercise the member of honor rights for the first time. That's troubling. Do you think he's here because of today's vote? Hmm. Yes, Serge, most likely. Well, I'm sure he will support you, sir. We'll learn soon enough. I don't think he will. I'm trying to change his perfect constitution. I really don't think he's going to try to support me. Serge drove inside the gates of the parkway and parked the car. We have arrived, sir. Hmm. Thank you, Serge. Before you go, I want you to take this. My father had this pocket watch, and he said it protected him from the evil of the world. I want you to have it. He opened his hand and showed me a very old-looking pocket watch. It looked like it was made during the century of evolutions. I can't take this. It must be valuable to you. I insist. Very well. My father would be happy. Okay. I'll take it. I looked at the back of the watch. The year 1920 was engraved on it. I put it in my front pocket, gave my thanks to Serge, and opened the car door. Good luck with the vote. I walked up the white stone stairs of the Grand National Assembly. The entrance looked like a temple gate from the classical era. The door opened to reveal vast corridors of wood and white stone. I joined the crowd of people who were walking slowly towards the parliamentary hall. Suddenly, I noticed Lucian emerge from the crowd of packed politicians in front of me. He looked relieved when he saw me. Ah, oh, sir, there you are. Have you seen Vice President Fecturn? He's nowhere to be found. Hmm. I've just arrived here, Lucian. I hope Mr. Vecturn arrives soon, too. At any rate, how about yourself? Are you ready to finally face the assembly, sir? As ready as I've ever been, Lucian. I have full confidence in you, Mr. President. I have no idea whether I'm going to succeed or not. I don't know whether my my main goal this game has been to work on the economy. Economy is my number one thing. Then reform is my second. And hey, economy is looking great. I'm very happy with that. Now let's see if my secondary goal can work out. I mean, it's already failed one time, but let's see if we can succeed here. We followed the crowd into the parliamentary hall. After we were inside, Lucy and I separated to take our seat, uh, assigned seats. I went up to the mezzanine overlooking the hall and sat down. I waited as the PMs took their places inside the hall one by one. After a while, I saw Gloria walk to her elevated seat at the center of the hall. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. We will shortly begin with today's agenda of the USP's proposed changes to the Constitution of Swordland. After a short while, everyone was in their seats. <laughs> According to the current Constitution, constitutional amendments require two-thirds majority in order to reach the Assembly approval. If the vote succeeds, the proposal will be sent to the Supreme Court. The proposal in question includes these points. She started reading the proposal to the Assembly. First section of the changes, Article 57, is modified with the following. She continued reading the proposal, highlighting each section. Section 2, paragraph 36. She went on. 
may not exercise his rights to end on. The justices of the Supreme Court, most of the MPs, seemed like they were already falling asleep. A simple majority is considered. The seat was really hurting my back. Section 4, paragraph 44a. It felt like an eternity had passed. Finally, she finished reading the changes. I hereby invite all of you to vote. Whew, she struck her gavel down. The loud bang made some MPs jump up in shock as they woke from their deep sleep. As I previously stated, it will require two-thirds majority in order to pass. You may now cast your votes. Also, my last time I played a capitalist run, my vote failed. And then on my communist run, my vote succeeded. <laughs> I don't know why, but I, when I was a communist in this game, I was a way more successful just overall. My capitalist run went down. And, like, the one thing that went well in my capitalist run is economy, which why I'm a little nervous about this. Because last time I tried to go all in for economy, you know, that's my main thing. I'm going capitalist. All my other stuff failed. <laughs> Though, last time, actually, my economy was actually not even this good, so. I think I'm doing pretty well. I'm just hoping this succeeds. Come on. I felt the need to stand up and stretch. I looked down at the hall from the platform I was seated on. Some assembly members immediately walked to the ballot box to cast their votes. Most of them, however, began to congregate in groups around the hall, discussing the changes. Uh, go down to the hall where all the MPs are. I descended from the magazine down to the hall. As soon as I reached the bottom of the stairs, Kezaro Kimino approached me. M Mr. President, how are you feeling about the vote? Hm. Uh, very positive. Even knowing you don't have our support, how optimistic of you. I've lost my respect for you, Mr. Rain. So many problems in Swordland that must be addressed, and you insist on stalling us with your democratic reforms. I know you will fail, you will lose the game, and so will your entire administration. Up to be there when it happens. Keep hoping, Mr. Kibbener. <laughs> he abruptly turned away from me and walked towards the seat. Then I saw Lucian waving at me. He was among a group of people in the corner of the hall. I walked to him. Well, I'm really hoping that your party doesn't matter. Because this is enough. If, a, if the, enough of the USP votes and the PFJP votes, which I should get all the PFJP. This is basically their bill. Well, there's a couple members that might not, like the person who's like, no, we shouldn't go with them. They're taking our legislative legacy. And it's like, dude, I'm doing your legislative legacy and you'll get some, and maybe you'll get some support from actually voting with me. So come on, let's, let's fix this country together. But um, hopefully I'll get most of them and most of the USP and that'll be enough. On my way, I bumped in the Mosin leak. And then maybe I'll get, like, one NFP member randomly. Maybe they'll write the wrong... Maybe they'll accidentally write yes instead of no. Maybe they'll get... I should get their entire party drunk. Then maybe they'll accidentally just get drunk and be like, Yeah, yes, I agree. Oh, wait, I meant to vote no. Darn it. Oh, wow. Well. Give me some more booze. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Joking. Mr. President, I'm sorry I didn't see you there. I wish you good luck with the vote. Today is a big day for you, after all. It's a big day for all of us. Most of the independents will be voting, yes. Mr. President, even though we feel it doesn't address the issues we care about the most, it is a step in the right direction. But I have to say, we were disappointed when you first read the proposal. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I hope you don't ignore British rights as well, Mr. President. I've got to go cast my vote. I'm not, I'm not, I know it might seem like I have been a bit, but I'm literally working on it. I'm working on stuff to change. I just have to keep people on my side. Once this vote is done, things will start changing. <laughs> I just have to keep people on my side enough to get this vote done. This needs to be done more than anything else. Well, besides our economy. I just have so many important things to work on, okay? Economy growth, political change, ending racism. That's my one, two, and three policies, okay? Okay? <laughs> Fixing the economy, then political change to the entire system, then ending all racism. That's the that that's the three. That's the three. One, two, and three. Boom. Simple as that. We'll get to it. <laughs> I finally reached Lucian, by now deep in conversation with another member of our party. He excused himself and turned towards me. 
Sir, did you vote yet? We have to be quick. Um, what's the rush? I'll explain on the way. I signed my vote and prepared the envelope. Together, Lucian and I walked to the center of the hall to cast our votes. He kept rushing me throughout the process. Gloria bowed her head slightly in respect as she saw us vote. Lucian pulled on my arm and whispered in my ear, Mr. President, we may have a problem. Torkin's soul is here. I know. You have to we ha you have to accelerate the voting process. We need to we need everyone to vote as soon as possible. We don't know what he's capable of right now. But if assembly members see him, he might influence them against the proposal. Uh, should I talk to him? I would advise against that right now. The assembly must focus on the vote. Any confrontation between the two of you would draw their attention away. Let's just go back to our seats. Any noise we make will distract everyone further. Setting Lucian pulling me aside. Sir, what do we do? He pointed at the back of the assembly near one of the exits. I followed his finger to see Turk and Soul sitting there. He looked much older than he had five years ago, but I could tell he had the same fire in him. Some MPs had already gathered around him and were chatting and all. The assembly gradually went quiet as people started to notice Soul's presence in the hall. Should we do something? We have to refrain from giving him the spotlight he expects. Maybe you can address him after the vote. As I talked to Lucian, I spotted Cursero Kiminard walking to the back of the hall towards Turk and Sol. He bowed in front of Sol and gave him a military salute. Seeing this, more people started to approach him. Yeah, you. Suddenly, Gloria came up behind us. Gentlemen, why don't we you go back to your seats? Let's follow the procedure. Oh, by the way, we have 251 members today. As you can see, the member of honor is here. He has already cast his vote. Has he now? So, Miss Tory, how many votes were you missing? Only a few. Albin Clavin and three other men approached us with envelopes in their hands. And these must be them. Good day to you, gentlemen, Madam Speaker. Hm. Good day, Mr. Clavin. I'm sorry to take so long, Mr. President. There was a friend who needed more clarification for this vote. He gestured at the men behind him. Let's get this over, Miss gentlemen. They went ahead and cast their votes. Let's win this, Mr. President. He walked to his seats with a fist in the air. Now, why don't you two get back to your seats as well? Very well, very well. We both went back to our seats. When I returned back to the museum, I saw Peter sitting in the chair next to mine. Did you cast your vote? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. He looked at Gloria as she and her assistants counted the votes. The speaker's seat was only a few meters away from the platform. I really hope this proposal goes through. It will. Let's see. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm staying confident. I'm not wavering. We're winning this. He tried to get Gloria's attention by waving at her. How many votes left? Gloria looked at Peter. She looked annoyed. 136 A's. 40 more votes to count. Peter turned to me. We need 30 out of the last 40. Damn. Hmm. It's okay. There's hope. Come on. Mm -hmm. Ugh, I'm nervous because I think that... Mm, I don't know. Look at friends over there. I'm sure he was behind this mess. You shouldn't have trusted him. It's not over yet, Peter. Don't jump to conclusions. Well, a single bang from Gloria's gavel reverberated around the hall. Everyone fell silent. The voting has concluded. No! I should have been a communist. <laughs> it always works when I'm a communist and not when I'm a capitalist. <laughs> The proposal has 166 A's and 85 nays, failing to surpass the two-thirds majority threshold. I heard a chorus of angry outbursts coming from the USP seats. Wait, what? Order, ladies and gentlemen. Due to the member of the honors attendance, the two-thirds threshold responds to 167 votes. Oh my god! What? This didn't happen in either of my other runs. The first one I failed by like 20 votes. I was way off, nowhere close. And the second one I just won. This one, are we serious? This is the first time I've seen this. One vote and only because he showed up and voted. 
because he definitely voted nay. He didn't support me. He wasn't like one vote towards me. His reason is why we didn't win. Him alone. I just... Uh, uh, we were that close. I've never seen that before. I didn't know that could happen. I didn't know that could happen. Thereby, the Grand National Assembly has rejected the changes to the Constitution. I turned to Peter. How could she just shift the required vote like that? She just did. The Assembly was roaring with all kinds of different reactions. I felt destroyed. I lowered my head with cl and closed my eyes for a second. God, I'm sorry. It's okay. We'll find another plan. The MPs kept shouting in the hall. Among them, I heard Friends Richter's voice. <sighs> Friends Richter. I blame the president for this result. He and his party's weak attitude towards real change doomed him from the start. He's just like his predecessors, enjoying the privilege of the presidency while ignoring the responsibility that comes with it. You loved my reforms. You loved them. You were so supportive of them. It is time to realize the real change will only come from the real reformists. The People's Freedom and Justice Party will keep leading this movement. The reformists and peace started applauding him. Suddenly, so he noticed to console, slowly rising from his seat at the back. He seemed to be struggling and used his cane for help. He stood and gazed around the hall as all of the members of the Grand National Assembly went quiet. Uh, I'll just keep, uh, you know, let's call out to him. Mr. Soul, welcome to the assembly. He looked at me. Give the title you hold the respect it deserves, Mr. President. He turned his back and walked out of the exit as two of his guards held the door open for him. What the hell was that? Soul or no soul, we are definitely effed. Neither the party nor the public is going to be pleased. Peter, shut up. Fine, fine. We both looked down at the floor for a while. After regathering our thoughts, Peter and I walked out of the assembly hall. We waited for Surge by the entrance. Every vote matters. Yep, I see, new achievement. I told you I've never seen that before. Every vote matters, ugh. The vo assembly voted against constitutional changes. The Grand National Assembly of Swordland on Friday rejected the amendment to the Constitution that was proposed by the United Swordland Party. I officially announced the rejection of the constitutional amendment, said Speaker Gloria Tory, after the proposal rejected in public succession. According to Tory, 166 lawmakers voted in favor of the amendment, failing to pass the threshold. Even though 166 votes are normally required for the amendment to pass, due to the attendance of the member honored, the threshold was shifted to co correspond to two-thirds as written to the Constitution. One member of the assembly abstained from voting in the session intended by 251 members of 250 seat, including President Rain and Member Honor. Turk and Soul. It was close, but didn't happen, said Tori after the results. Mm. Soul blocks constitutional change. The dead have risen. Old man Turk and Soul crawled out of crypt and dragged themselves to whole sword for a single person to vote against Anton Rain's constitutional reforms, and it worked. The reforms lost by a single vote, meaning Soul and his dusty constitution will continue to shape sword them for years to come. We didn't have high hopes for Rain's changes in the first place, but the failure is nonetheless discouraging. Thanks to Soul, we may never have another chance like this during our lifetimes. Ugh, <sighs> Soul. Can we just, like, have the have votes recount without Soul? That makes us win, you know? You know, recount, recount, recount. <laughs> Meeting on the results of the assembly vote. Lucian and Peter and I met in my office to decide to move out onto the balcony to get some fresh air in the increasing summer heat. They both looked uncomfortable in their suits. Peter was trying to not make eye contact and kept letting out depressing sighs. He wiped the sweat off his head fill her head with a handkerchief. I still cannot believe we lost by one vote. It was all Miss It was all Miss Tory's doing. She changed the threshold that B She merely used her authority as speaker. It was a valid interpretation of the Constitution. There were more than two hundred fifty members present. With a single vote, the ghost of the past has once again kept their nation from achieving progress. Yeah, what the H was that all about? Solo peering out of nowhere? Gentlemen, nothing is over yet. We still have a country to lead, if we can lead it. Which we will. You're right, sir. We must plan ahead now. We'll be organizing a cabinet meeting to discuss our present and future state of affairs. We'll also try and test the waters with our MPs. We cannot let the party slip out of our grasp. Good. I want each minister to give me a report. Yes, sir. Lucian looked at his watch. I think it's time to conclude our little meeting, sir. 
There was a tap on my shoulder. Lizio Suno had joined us at the balcony. Pardon the interruption, gentlemen. Mr. President, David Whiskey is calling about the upcoming foreign policy meeting. Perfect timing. Tell him I'll be right there. I will, sir. She turned to leave the balcony, then back to us. My condolences on the vote, vote results, Mr. Rain, Peter. Uh, sh I mean, hey, hey, you know what? You know what? At least I got a new achievement. Hey, sometimes you gotta get those achievements, you know? That's one more in the bank. She looked Peter in the eye as she said this, and adored Lucian altogether. Peter's eyes, fo eyes followed her as she walked out. Getting pretty hot out here. Okay, let's call it finished. You may both go. All right, gentlemen. I'll see you later. They both left. Yeah. What's the report? USP meeting criticizes the president. In yesterday's internal USP meeting, a large group of party members voiced their disappointment in the failed constitutional vote in the assembly. Elias Graf criticized President Rain for pursuing change within out in death research and proper communication between the party members blame the president and vice president for the failure no we needed one person to not, not ugh. rumberg whistleblower arrives a whistleblower from the rumberg security bureau has escaped the swordland by crossing the border and turned himself into the authorities in Estord. agent charleston hellsword has promised to reveal extremely sensitive information about the development of weapons program we will give refuge to him and risk antagonizing rumberg or send him back we're granting asylum. F you, Rumberg. I don't care about you right now. Swordland accepts Whistleblower. Who is Chilston Hillstone, and what does he know? That's the question of the day, as President Rain has agreed to grant refuge to the rogue national security agent from Rumberg. After saving the Swordland, Hillstone promised to reveal sensitive government information in exchange for asylum. Whether Rain's decision will be worth the anger and possible retaliation from the Rumberg government remains to be seen. What's going on in Elton? Whistleblower and safe house. After receiving Agent Chillstone Hillstone, we have secretly transferred him to a safe house near Antel. The perimeter is guarded by special force units to ensure no escape or rescue tips can be conducted by Rumberg Intelligence. The agent is currently being interrogated thoroughly to make sure that the preliminary information provided is accurate. Well, guys, celebrate! We got a new achievement! Whoop whoop! That's, that's what we were here for, right? This is a ch achievement tutorial, and if you do everything exactly as I did, uh, you will get the one you will get the one vote off. Uh, so, you know, just copy exactly as I did, you know, do all the same decisions, and you'll be able to get that achievement. You're welcome, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. <laughs> you know, this series that's a tutorial. Just, you know, fuck. Do that. <laughs> but, yeah... <laughs> Um, but yeah, we'll just be continuing on and trying to run this country to continue in the next episode. I mean, at least the economy's going up. But I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button. And as always, peace.